You are listening to the For Flourishing Sake podcast by Frederica Roberts. Welcome to episode 33. Today I bring you a very special guest. Kerry Hoare will introduce herself, so I will leave that bit to her, and I will just tell you that she's going to talk about a very important yet incredibly simple aspect of self-care that we can all do during these very challenging and unusual times. Enjoy. Hello, my name's Kerry Hoare, and I'm the Mental Health and Wellbeing Lead at Malvern St. James Girls School in Worcestershire. Never has there been a greater need for self-care. As stress levels soar, tensions rise, and we navigate this new norm of rapid change, it's vital that we take a more deliberate approach to our self-care. Left unchecked, we run the risk of our stress levels exceeding our capacity to cope and reaching overwhelm. For those people used to managing mental health issues or for empaths like me, we'll be well-versed in the art of self-care. For some, this will be a whole new world. The basic principle is that as stress increases, so too should the activities which make us feel good in order to keep things in balance. Activities which reduce stress and keep us feeling good often happen as a byproduct of our day-to-day routine. Things like friendly exchanges in passing, picking up a treat on the way home from work, or just moving around from place to place, for example. Lockdown has not only reduced our movements to a minimum, but also eliminated a lot of those feel-good activities that happen by accident. That's why it is so important that we recognise the need to relieve our stress with purpose and take a more deliberate approach to self-care. But when thinking about self-care, we don't all have to become that sort of person who does a yoga flow at dawn, makes homemade sourdough for breakfast, meditates on mountains, crafts a macrame pot holder and then designs a pine cone installation to feed the birds in the garden. There is a well-being hack which can transform any activity into an act of self-care. As you've been scrolling through social media or the endless memes your mum has been sending you on WhatsApp, or maybe that's just me, you may have seen the quote that reads, you're not stuck at home, you're safe at home. Both statements are true, but by reframing the situation to reflect comfort instead of fear, we're allowing ourselves to view and experience things in a more positive way. And the good news is we can apply this method of reframing to just about anything. So shifting our thinking about the most basic of tasks is an easy way to improve our well-being. By viewing things like hoovering or cooking, exercise, even showering as acts of self-care, we can transform our days in lockdown from a monotony of everyday duties to days filled with self-compassion. Whilst hoovering, think to yourself, I'm doing this for myself because I deserve to be in a clean environment. See showering as a generous act of self-care and imagine all those stresses and strains literally washing away down the plug hole at your feet. You're cooking because your body deserves nutritious fuel. You're exercising because your body is a miracle and worthy of being kept healthy and in good shape. Even things like watering the plants, just thinking, oh, this is nice while doing so, transforms a chore into something you're doing to make yourself feel good. The thing is, Our brains produce thoughts and feelings in much the same way our cells produce biological matter, some of which we keep and some we discard. We don't have to believe every negative thought and we have some degree of control over our thinking patterns. So taking charge of our thoughts and planting positive notions among them is a bit like taking vitamins to supplement good health in our bodies. By reframing the mundane acts into acts of self-care, We are telling our brains we are worthy of kindness and compassion and therefore cultivating more of the same. Try this out for a day and take notice of how you feel. I'm sending you so much love and strength in this really difficult time. Thank you so much, Kerry. That was brilliant and really useful information. If you have any content that you want to share with the um, For Flourishing Sake podcast listeners, please do get in touch. I am particularly interested in hearing from people that can contribute activities and resources that we can all implement into our lives, whether as adults or children, to help us not only be well, but flourish even in the most challenging of circumstances that we are all uh, undergoing at the moment. So if you want to get in touch, the easiest way to do that is via 
via Twitter and the account is at Flourishing Ed. I look forward to hearing from you.